Color is extremely important in our images, and when our colors match, it creates harmony in our design. Today we'll show you how to match colors of one object to another in a photo, as well as add color match design. Hey there, my name is Aaron Nace. Welcome to Flurn. Let's go ahead and color match. So we're jumping into Photoshop right here, and I love this photo. We have these beautiful pink flowers here and this really cool yellow classic looking moped. But I want this moped to be the same color as these flowers. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna start by selecting the moped. Now we can do this using the object selection tool. It's right over here in our toolbar under the marquee tool. You're gonna see the object selection tool, which is nestled with the quick selection tool and the magic wand. The keyboard shortcut is W. Let's go ahead and click there. Now, as you hover over different icon items in your images, you can see the flowers or the bike. You can make those into a selection simply by clicking on them. All right, so let's go ahead and zoom in. We've made this bike a selection now. Once you have an active selection, you can go ahead and use an adjustment layer, and that selection will automatically be loaded into the layer mask of the adjustment layer. Basically, it's going to say, hey, only be visible where this bike is visible. Let's go ahead and do it. So we have our selection active as we can see. We're gonna to go to layer, down to new adjustment layer, and we're gonna go over to where it says hue slash saturation. This is the greatest place if you wanna do drastic color changes in your image. Hue slash saturation. Let's go ahead and click on that and click on okay. There we go. So as we can see, let's go to our layers panel here. We have a hue slash saturation adjustment layer, and this is what our layer mask looks like. You can see it's black everywhere, just white on the bike, meaning it's only gonna be visible on the bike. Alrighty, so let's go to our properties window. Now here where it says master, what we're gonna do is go down to our yellows. So we wanna choose the yellows on the bike because I don't wanna change the color, for instance, of this tail light or any other colors. So we've selected the bike first, now let's select the yellows of the bike. So we're gonna to go to yellows down from master and then we wanna use our eyedropper. So let's click on our eyedropper and then make sure we select right here on the actual yellows that we want to affect. And that's going to make sure to put it in the exact right set of yellows. Okay, now we're ready to start changing our hue. And as I click and drag my hue slider left or right, I can see that I can completely change the colors of this bike. How cool is this? It's looking really, really good. Let's go ahead and bring it right to about there looks pretty good. Now, a lot of times we're not exactly sure, like that looks kind of like the flowers, but not exactly like the flowers. So here's my next suggestion. We're gonna go ahead and create a new layer in our layers panel. I'm gonna hit B for the brush tool. Now let's hold Alt or Option and simply select some of these colors here, okay? And then I'm just gonna paint just on this new layer right next to this brush. There we go. I'm just gonna grab a couple different colors from these flowers and paint them right over here. Let's go ahead and back and zoom in again. So now I have a nice color reference right beside the bike. It's gonna help me color it a little bit more accurately. Let's go back to this hue saturation adjustment layer that we made. Okay, we'll click on properties. And again, we wanna go from here back to our yellows because remember that's the original color that we were editing. So now, instead of having to like look way over there in the photograph, at these tiny little pink flowers, I can see these big splotches of color right here. It's gonna help me color match a little bit better. All right, so you can see I was a little bit too far to the left. I need to go to the right just a little bit more. That's looking good. And our saturation, we wanna take this and just drag that down a little bit as well until it starts to match a little bit better. All right, and we can see that's looking really, really good. Let's just pull this right about there and the colors are matching really nicely now. So we can see I've created basically like an in-between color of this bike, trying to match pretty closely what I have with these other colors, okay? Don't forget about saturation, that's a big one. Oftentimes, it's gonna be too saturated or not saturated enough. So make sure you work with hue and saturation. Lightness, you can leave that where it is. Fantastic. Now let's go ahead and turn this layer off and on, and we can see what a really nice change that's made for the bike. We can turn those color match splotches off. Now, it did a really good job selecting the yellows, but we have a couple little areas to clean up, like these little orange areas on the headlights. So what we're gonna do here is go ahead and click on the layer mask. Click on the layer mask, okay? And then we can either hit subtract from mask if we want to, which is basically just going to bring us the brush tool 
and it's going to make black as our foreground color. There we go. And let's go ahead and use our open and close brackets to make that brush a little bit smaller. So subtract from mask. Now we basically just paint where we don't want this to be visible. Boom. There we go. Let's go ahead and turn this off and on and see if I missed anywhere else, this little orange tail light here as well. And going in and doing these little details, that's just going to make sure that everything looks nice and cohesive. All right. And as I turn this off and on, I think we've done a great job. Really cool. So now, you know what? If I go back here, let's go back to our properties window. Uh, let's go back here to yellows. And I think I'm going to make it just a little lighter. So our lightness here, let's make it a little bit lighter. Yeah, I like that a little bit more. I know I said to kind of like leave lightness alone, but making it a little bit lighter, I think makes, makes a match even better. All right. So let's go ahead and turn this off and on. What a nice color match we have. Now, I also want to make this like kind of a graphic. So we want to add some text and we want to color match the text to this image. And we're also going to add a drop shadow that color matches as well. It's going to make everything super cohesive. So back in Photoshop, this layer where we created the different colors on here, we can just click on delete that layer. We don't need it. I just wanted it there so I could have it something close so I could see what I was doing. Now let's hit T for our type tool. And I'm just going to click in here and type in summer. There we go. Let's go ahead and bring this right over here. Now you might be tempted just to use black text, but I think this is going to look really good. Let's go to our properties window here, here where it says color. Let's click there. And then using our color match, let's go ahead and bring this color slider right down there. I can simply use my eyedropper and start to sample from my images. And in this case, I'm going to sample directly from this bike. So let's go ahead and hit OK. There we go. And we're using Futura Bold is our font. Now I'm going to hit Control or Command J, which is going to duplicate that summer text. Let's bring that up a little bit and I'm going to just double click right here and I'm going to type in one great as in one great summer. Let's go to our properties window and I'm just going to click and drag on the size and drag that a little bit further down. Fantastic. So let's go ahead and make sure it's just to the left of this door. Now, one thing we want to do is we want to make sure that both of our text elements are left aligned with each other. Because you can see this one kind of looks like it might be sticking out a little bit farther left there. So we're going to shift click both one great and summer and then hit our move tool right over here and then go ahead and left align them. And you can see it actually left aligned. It brought the S a little bit to the left. There we go. Let's go ahead and click there. And now they're perfectly aligned. And I'm just going to bring that up. Let's go ahead and shift click one great and summer. Control or Command G to group those together. And we'll just put this right over here. So it's kind of, there we go, matching. Like I wanted one great to be on the left door here. And I think summer, you know, like kind of basically like between these two lines, I think that works pretty well. Okay. So this is like pretty nice. I, I don't mind this design, but one great summer being pink. Um, it doesn't stand out kind of like as much as I would like it to. So we're going to add a drop shadow. Now here's the deal with drop shadows. You don't want to make a black drop shadow generally almost ever, <laughs> especially if you're doing this over top of an image, you want to choose dark colors from your image. And that's why this tutorial is all about color matching. So we're actually going to choose some of these dark greens from the plants here. And that's going to be the color of our dark, of our drop shadow. So let's go ahead and open up our group here. There we go. We'll just call that text. And I'm going to click on summer. We're going to go to layer down to layer style. And we're going to go down to drop shadow layer, layer style and drop shadow. Okay. Now for this drop shadow, let's see, we got to just make everything. Uh, so let's go ahead and bring it right about there and make sure that we can see everything. Cause it's kind of getting a little bit cluttered. Okay. Now here we go up here at the top where it says blend mode multiply. Let's go ahead and click on our color here, bring that up there. And then I can start grabbing colors from my image. So I want to like grab a nice dark green from this photo. We don't want to use a black. It's just going to make the image really flat. So let's go ahead and hit. Okay. You can see we've got a really nice dark green. We can bring our opacity up and my other key here. Let's go ahead and just delete this other drop shadow. Or so we're starting from scratch. My other key is we have a one drop shadow. I always love to create at least two drop shadows. Whenever I'm using a drop shadow, we want one that's going to be really close to our object and one that's a little bit farther and a little bit more blurred. So here's how we do that. 
The one that's really close, we're going to go ahead here where it says the distance. We're going to bring that really nice and close. So we can see it has a drop shadow, but it's very, very close. Okay. Now, here where you have drop shadow, let's click on this plus icon, and it's going to make a duplicate of that drop shadow. Okay. Now with this duplicate, we're going to take our distance slider, and we're just going to bring that up a little bit, like, farther away. Okay. We're going to take our opacity, and we're going to really lower that down quite a bit. Okay, so it's going to be a lot more subtle this time. And we're going to take our size and make that a little bit larger. It's going to make it like fade. Okay, so now we have two drop shadows on there and it's such a nice effect. Let's just go ahead and show you when I turn these off and on. So you can see there's like the bigger drop shadow and there's the smaller drop shadow. Now, if we just have the bigger drop shadow on there, it doesn't really look that good, right? If we just have the smaller drop shadow, it also doesn't look really good. When you combine them together though, mm, I love that. It's a really nice effect. So anytime you use a drop shadow, I recommend making at least two. Fantastic. Let's go in and hit OK right here. Now, I did some really nice work with this drop shadow. I want this to be on my text that says one great. However, I don't want to have to redo all that, right? So here's what we're going to do. We're going to hold Alt or Option. Go right over here to where it says FX, all the way on the right side of your layer, FX. So we're going to hold Alt or Option and click and drag this FX. You should see it says FX effects right there. We're going to click and drag this to this one grade. There we go. So literally, I copied the layer effects from one layer to the other one simply by holding Alt or Option, clicking on that FX and dragging it over. OK, now this looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and just click on this little icon to minimize our layer effects to clean up our layering really quick. One great summer. In this case, the drop shadow looks really good on summer, but for one great, it's a little bit big. The drop shadow is just a little bit big. I think the drop shadow would be better if it was a little bit smaller. But remember, we made two different drop shadows here, and I don't want to have to go in and change both of those and try to get the ratio of each of those correct. But there's a really cool tool in Photoshop that allows us to scale all the effects of a layer at one time. So that's what we're going to do. Let's go ahead and click right here where it says one great. Okay, it has a layer effect applied to it, as you can see. We're going to go up here to our menu. We're going to go to layer. We're going to go down to our layer style. And then here's the little secret. Roll the way down to the bottom here. You're going to see scale effects, dot, 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 scale effects. So let's go ahead and click there. Now, with scale layer effects, I can click here and I have a little slider that I can bring to the left or I can bring this to the right. And as you can see, as I bring this to the left or right, it's scaling all the effects at the same time. So I can make one great. There we go. I can make this look really, really nice for the size of text that we have for this one great. There we go. I think let's type in about 85. I think that looks really good. So we're at 85% of our original size. And I think this fits a lot better with the size because check this out. If it's too big, like it starts to look really like kind of blurry and weird. And it makes it actually like more difficult to read. Like I, I can barely read this, right? And the whole idea with adding these drop shadows was putting some uh, like dark area underneath our text to make it easier to read. All right, let's go to 80. I think that'll work pretty well. So we'll go to 80% and hit OK. So now the drop shadow of one great and summer, it actually looks like it's very similar, but it's a different uh, scale. This is 80% the size of this one. And there we have our drop shadow. I think that's looking really, really nice. So remember the color match, we've not only color matched our bike to the flowers in this image, but we've also matched the color match with the text and the drop shadow is taken from a green in this photo. So everything looks really nice, cohesive. I would just crop this in something just like that. And we have a really nice little poster. You could use this on Instagram. I mean, no, this is horizontal, but a lot of the time we'll see it on our Instagram reels, something like beautiful, nice titling and things like that. This is a fantastic way to title and color match your images and your graphics. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, hit that subscribe button. We'll send you more free Photoshop tutorials. Thanks again. I'll learn you later. Bye, everyone.